Hey guys, this is Neil. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on Maiden Hair Fern. This was a request from a very long time ago. I can't remember from who, sorry, but I finally made it, so let's begin. I'm going to show you the silhouette of the basic fern first. If you want a more detailed explanation on this, I actually have a video on how to paint different types of ferns. You can also check that out. It basically comes with one main stem and it branches out like a leaf, but within those branches, there are smaller branches along the side of it. So try to draw the silhouette out first because this will help you out with the final shape in the end. Since the maiden hair fern is a delicate type of fern, the branches are easily swayed by the wind, which means you can really play with the movement of the branches when you do the final composition later. So you can actually make the movement quite flexible, but for the sake of this first stage, I'm just going to show you straight on. Next, I'm going to talk about the individual leaves. The shape of the leaf is like a rounded triangle where the point comes out from the stem, where it grows out, with the top of the leaf a little bit frilly and rounded. Don't get this confused with the shape of ginkgo leaves though, where it fans out, the maiden hair leaf isn't as wide and it's much rounder. Pay attention to the bottom of the leaf where it grows, the maiden hair leaf has more of a convex bottom whereas the ginkgo leaf is much more concave. Try to draw out the leaves over and over again first so you get a good understanding of the shape. It's okay if each leaf looks different, this would make the fern look much more natural. Make sure you're really comfortable in drawing it out first before you start start to paint to make the painting process much more enjoyable and less stressful. Here I've also drawn out what a ginkgo leaf looks like and if your leaves start looking like this it means that you've gone a bit too far so even if the shape is varied make sure that you have the same concept for each leaf. Now let's try to place it all together. I'm going to start by drawing out the branches first because this way you'll get the overall shape of the fern first. Then start drawing out the fern leaves around it. It would be better if you draw bigger than this, but I'm just going to draw the size just for the sake of showing you. When we are going to paint this though, we're going to approach it a different way and that's to paint leaf by leaf because I personally find that this would make the painting less stiff. So also practice drawing out the fern leaf by leaf and see what you can come up with in the end of it. You can keep on doing this until you're comfortable or if you find that drawing out the branches first is what you feel is best for you, then you can try to do that first. But in the end, I would actually recommend you to draw just the leaf by itself and then build it up from there. I'm going to show you what I mean. This is the process that I will actually be using when painting. I find that this way everything looks more organic, especially when you do it with paint, because you can make each stem connect to the leaf better. And this is something that I personally practice. I drew a lot of these sketches in another sketchbook off camera. That way I can also practice the composition and visualize better what I would like to put down on paper when I get to painting at freehand. But as I said, if drawing out the branches first is what you prefer, you can also try to paint that way too. Because I understand that it would be a safer approach to get the correct balance of the overall shape of the frame. I'm going to use three colors for this and that's permanent yellow deep and two types of green which is sap green and terra verde. Essentially what I'm going to do, like a lot of my paintings, I'm going to have all three colors mingle together as I paint. So the ratio of the colors will vary continuously. The yellow essentially makes the green lighter and warmer and the different types of green would just create different tones of greens. So you don't actually have to use the same types of greens as I do but I recommend using more than one type of green to get a bit of variation with the colors so it doesn't look too flat. As usual you can draw a few of these leaves first and try to fill it in and even better practice is to paint one of your larger sketches this way you'll get a better feeling of painting angled leaves because it does feel different on your brush as 
you angle it different directions. But once you are comfortable with that, you can go along with the same practice but without the outline. When you're painting the leaves, take note that I don't let my paint puddle. I usually pull all the puddles to go into one direction and that's towards the middle of the stem so the paint wouldn't gather together. If the paint puddles in other parts like say in the middle, then the bloom of your paint might be a bit uncontrollable and it might come up with unwanted textures instead of nice flat washes. You'll also see me adding a darker green in the middle. This is to create a subtle gradient within the leaf. I'm not going to do this for every single leaf though for the sake of this video because it'll take too long, but of course you can do that to yours. To make a nice gradation, we're basically using the wet on wet technique where the paint travels on the wet surface. The more water you have on the flat surface, the easier the paint would glide through. So to control this, I would recommend you to add the darker color while the paint is not too wet or puddling. So maybe at a stage where it has a light sheen and you can tell that it's starting to dry but it's not completely dry yet. This does take experience to figure out which stages of dryness or wetness of your paint or paper. So you can experiment with it first before you paint the final composition if you're interested in this technique. If your green comes out too dark like this one, you can also use a clean dry brush to take some of the paint off while it's still wet or spread it around evenly with your brush. But this really comes down to your preference in the end. If you want the paint to travel, it might create a nice effect that you like. So keep experimenting and see what your preference is. As I paint this, I'm also going to change the shades of the greens and also the size and angles of the leaves. You'll see later in my final composition that I'm going to include quite small ferns too. And if you do the same composition as me, I would recommend you to use a smaller brush when making the smaller leaves to make it easier to control. But for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to stick with my brush. You can also use this chance to practice a little bit of layering. If you want to layer two leaves together, I would recommend for you to make sure that the leaf you're going to layer onto is completely dry. If the leaf is slightly wet, the paint might just travel across to the other leaf and it'll just end up blending instead of creating a nice transparent layer on top. You can use a hair dryer to make the process faster, but sometimes if you don't have it on hand, I would leave the area unpainted first and paint other parts while I wait for the paint to dry and then go back to it once it's ready to layer. I'm just going to show you a couple of sketches that I did to prepare this composition. I just basically repeated the same leaves but maybe moving in different directions or angle differently and changing the size and things. And that's basically it. Now I'm just going to paint through the final composition and you are free to paint along as you'll see this painting process is very repetitive because you're basically painting the same leaves over and over again. So this would be really fun for doodling and for beginners. Happy painting and I'll see you towards the end.
We are almost done with this painting. This is one of those paintings that if you don't apply good composition, the painting might look a bit bulky because it's basically a repetition of the same shapes. So try to not overwork it. Remember less is more and I would suggest for you to really sketch it out first before you paint your final painting. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you gave this a go. All the links will be in the description box. Thank you for watching till the end. I hope you have a good day and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!